Good evening, boys and girls, and welcome back to our third episode of Survivors, where we're learning how to survive and thrive. Tonight, tonight we're doing an important one. We're talking about how to start a fire. That's right, we're talking about starting a fire. That's what we're going to be covering tonight. And one of the most important things you need to know, if you're roughing it in the woods, is how to make a fire, okay? On the TV show Survivor, the first team to get the fire going on their side gives them a huge distinct advantage over the other team that doesn't. And with fire, you can purify water, you can cook food, you can wash your clothes a little bit more efficiently, you can uh, you see in your surroundings at night, and you can keep warm when the air gets cold, okay? In the woods on a cold night, fire is more and just just more important than anything else as far as cooking and seeing because it can be a matter of life and death trying to stay warm. Now, fire is an important part of our survival as a Christian too. Did you know that? Okay, there are times when we are alone and cold ourselves, and there are times when we need a little comfort. And there are times we need to be nourished and fed. And there's times we could use a little direction. So see, uh, fire can also be an important thing as a Christian for us to have. The fire we need comes from God. God alone can warm our hearts, protect us, nourish us, give us strength, and also give us confidence. Today's Bible survivor that we're talking about today is a man who probably thought he had been left all alone for good. You know, after 40 years of wandering around in the wilderness, the last thing Moses expected was a visit from the Lord. And that's exactly what happened when Moses saw God in what else but a burning bush full of fire. I tell you what, we're going to be in Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 20, all right? Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 20. You ready? Here we go. Meanwhile, Moses was shepherding the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led the flock to the far side of the wilderness, and he came to Horeb, the mountain of God. When the angel of the Lord appeared to him, in the flame of fire within a bush, as Moses looked, he saw that the bush was on fire, but not consumed. So Moses thought, I must go over and look at this remarkable sight. Why isn't the bush burning up? When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called out from the bush, Moses, Moses. Here I am, he answered. Do not come closer, he said. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place where you're standing is holy ground. Then he continued, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people in Egypt, and I have heard them crying out because of their oppressors. I know about their sufferings. I have come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and to bring them from the land to a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. The territory of the Canaanites, Hethanites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. So because the Israelites' cry for help has come to me, and I have also seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them, therefore go. I am sending you to Pharaoh that so you may lead my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses asked God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and that I should bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He answered, I will certainly be with you and this will be a sign to you that I am the one who sent you. When you bring the people out of Egypt, you will all worship God at this mountain. Then Moses asked God, If I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they asked me, What is his name? What should I tell them? God replied to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say this is to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. 
This is how I am to be remembered in every generation. Go and assemble the elders of Israel and tell them, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has appeared to me and said, I have paid close attention to you and what has been done to you in Egypt. And I have promised you that I will bring you up from the misery of Egypt to the land of the Canaanites, Hethanites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, a land flowing with milk and honey. They will listen to what you say. Then you, along with the elders of Israel, must go to the king of Egypt and say to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has met with us today. Now, please let us go on a three-day trip into the wilderness so we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. However, I know the king of Egypt will not allow you to go, even under force from a strong hand. But when I stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with my miracles that I will perform in it, after that, he will let you go. All right, boys and girls, we hear the story there of Moses and how he was called. And what called him? God. That's what called him. That's who called him. But what did he go to? He went to that burning bush, that warmth, that light, that fire, that guidance was all there. You see, Moses wasn't always a shepherd. He was a Jew born to a family of Jews who were slaves in Egypt. And through a strange series of events, Moses was adopted by the daughter of Pharaoh, ruler of Egypt. He grew up in the palace with a king, but he was partly raised by his mother who told him his true heritage. Now, as an adult, Moses tried to help his people by murdering a slave driver he saw abusing some Jewish slaves. Now, when this happened, Moses' act of violence forced him to go into exile working as a shepherd for 40 years, okay? It was lonely work, and after a time, Moses had to feel pretty alone and isolated. Now, then God arrives. This is so cool, okay? His fire warms Moses' heart. He reassures Moses that God was still with him. And what's more is he gives him direction, he gives him purpose, and he put a fire in Moses and Moses was able to go back to Egypt and save his people. Boys and girls, think about this. There are times in our lives when we get discouraged. Have any of y'all ever got discouraged or let down? Yeah, you see, we all have disappointments and we feel lonely. And we all want to give up at times. And you know what? When you get to that point, that's when God can step in and ignite a fire in us. The good news for us is we don't have to wait for God to come to us. You see, in Moses' time, God only came and spoke to those, those he chose. But today, because we have Jesus, we have the Holy Spirit, okay? And through the Holy Spirit, we can pray to God anytime we need him. When you're sad, you can pray to God for comfort. When you feel alone, you can pray for God to be near you. When you need direction, you can pray to God to show you the, what, the way you need to go and what you need to do. When you feel like you just can't go on anymore, you can pray for God to light a spark inside of you, boys and girls. God is our only prayer away. I mean, he, he's right there, but he wants you to call out to him. The fire you need when you can't go any further the fire you need when you can't be found in your Bible or anywhere else. When you need that fire, get your Bible. Get down on your knees. Pray. Call out to God. Take your fears, your sadness, your loneliness. Take it all to God. <coughs> there comes a time in all of our lives when we need a little fire. Everybody does. Let God put that fire in you and watch what he will do through you. Remember that God is a fire that comforts and guides us. And boys and girls, that's our bottom line for today. Check it out. Remember that God is a fire that comforts and guides us. He's always there for you, boys and girls. So right now, right now, let's take a minute and pray. God, thank you so much for the example we have of Moses and how you put a new fire back in him, Lord. You gave him new direction you showed him the way to go 
and you were there with him the entire time, guiding him, giving him the words to say, the actions to do. You did not leave him, God. And even as he brought the Israelites out of Egypt, you were there guiding them as a huge pillar of fire. God, thank you so much for all that you've done. Thank you for giving me direction in my life, being the comfort that I need to keep me warm, to keep me focused, to keep me seeing in a dark world. God, I thank you so much for doing that. For it's your name we pray. Amen. Now, boys and girls, before we go, we've also got our verse, okay? So let's take a look at our verse. And remember, this is the same verse we've been working on. So let's check it out here. Psalms 2911. Psalms 2911 says, The Lord gives strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. And that's Psalms 2911. One more time here. The Lord gives what? Strength to his people. The Lord blesses his people with peace. Psalms 2911. Boys and girls, I think that wraps it up for today. But before we go, we're talking about fire. We're talking about survival. Last week, I had a, or two weeks ago, had to make a plan. Last week, had to work on a shelter, a little lean to. Today, we're talking all about fire. So, Let's see if Mr. Steve can get a fire going because, you know, it, it just come pouring down rain here earlier. All right. Everything's soaking wet. I got to see if I can make a fire out of soaking wet stuff. Now, I will tell you this. I did have some wood put away in case of emergency. I busted out my secret stash of wood. Okay. So here we go. Before I get this going now, I also want to see you with your parents working on a little bit of campfire. Maybe some of y'all are camping out there. I want to see your efforts back toward me okay i want you to go out film it take pictures hashtag it survivors put it on the mv412 ministries facebook page and let me see what you're doing all right so boys and girls until next time i love you and so does god now let's go see if we can get a fire going all right boys and girls what i've done is i've went ahead and got out here and got my sticks set up and uh, it looks like they've been soaking up some of my water around here too so what I've done is I've cut some slivers really thin, and uh, I'm going to try to get those going, and then we'll just start working from there, okay? Now, boys and girls, if you're ever messing with a fire like this, you need to have an adult with you, all right? Adult supervision is required at this point, all right? And as you can tell, Mr. Steve doesn't have any adult supervision with me right now. Uh, Miss Nicole is inside, and the boys are inside. So we're doing this without some adult supervision on my part okay now I've got all my wood stacked up pretty good here and I'm trying to get this going in here oh if nothing else we got good smoke going let's see here work it got a bunch of small slivers oh we're starting to get a little something here oh we got a little something going there Oh, yeah. Boys and girls, I think I got something going. I got fire. Now, we're going to cheat just a tad bit. We're going to add a little bit of wet leaves a little bit. Let's see if we can't dry them out some as they get going here. Or I can totally knock out my fire. Let's see, can I get that back? Yeah. All right, let me move out of the smoke. All right, boys and girls, looks like I finally got it going here. I had to keep coaxing it, working it a little bit. But you know what? A fire like this can keep you warm at night. It can give you light, give you something to cook by. But the most important fire you can have in your life it's the fire that God puts in your heart to keep things going, to keep doing, to follow Him. Boys and girls, remember, everything's great to have a nice warm fire on the outside, but put a good warm fire on the inside and let that light that's coming from that fire shine into a dark world so other people can know about God. Until next time, boys and girls, again, I love you, so does God, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.